This is a Skywatcher Explorer 200P, if I'm not wrong. And uh, this is a 8 inch telescope, it's a Newtonian. And it's on a Mead LXD55. I always wanted to have one of these, and now I have one. And I'm using a uh, Angel's Eyes or Angelfish, something like that. Moonfish, yeah. Moonfish. Uh, Wide angle life is 32 millimeter and uh, with a skull watcher 50 millimeter uh, right angle and this is a moonfish 32 millimeter eyepiece is a wide angle eyepiece I think it's 70, 70 degrees or 72 and this is the let's go watch a 50 millimeter right angle view correct image like this as they call it RASI and this is an 8 inch telescope it's ultimate lovely uh, quadrillion mounted telescope and I'm using the LXD 55 mount mm. and also there is a control for the for that this is a uh, auto guider cable it's the first time I'm using a such a telescope on a, a quarter mount I had a LA Celestron in uh, in eight, I think yes, which is very similar to this, uh, and I'm using also some counterweight from the <laughs> another XLT Celestron, uh, which is this, yeah, uh, which is this uh, CG4 only XLT. Of course, the most important thing when you use a Newtonian and uh, a quarter mount is a telescope balance. So you have to first make sure that your uh, telescope is in a way that is balanced. The tube with the eyepiece and everything is a little bit high. Is a high profile, you can say. PDS ones, I think the Skywatcher PDS ones, are a little bit low profile. That's better for this astrophotography if you want to do. Uh, but this one is alright, I can use it. But the balance a little bit can be an issue if you want to add another, <laughs> for example, Barlow. So this is what you have to consider. I'm using two inch eye pieces because our three inch pieces is more com comfortable to view. I have adapter for taking a one and a quarter inch eye piece, but at the moment I don't want to use it. I have very good eye pieces for that also. And uh, I may use it when I need. And I have adjusted this so they are both in the same axis the telescope I'm showing you is a diameter 200 millimeter that is 8 inch a focal length 1000 millimeter and that makes the 1000 millimeter divided by 200 will be the F ratio that means 5 this is a quite fast telescope so it means you have a good and wide field of view. I'm looking forward to look at something when it comes up. And uh, yeah, it's my dream coming true. Scar Watcher 8 inch Newtonian. I'm looking forward to use this. And if you don't balance the telescope in the dark, Either this side or that side will come to you. That will hit your eye, nose, face, and this will hit your crotch. Depending if you're a male or female, the level of the pain will differ. <laughs> so be careful. Balance your <laughs> Newtonian telescope under a equatorial mount. If you want, don't have this problem, get a Dobsonian. The Dobsonians are now not available everywhere, you know, because of the COVID. 
uh, equipped with Dapsonians are sold. China cannot provide as much Dapsonian as uh, it could before the COVID, so uh, you have to be patient. If you get a second hand gear, grab it. In the view, I can say that uh, is inferior to the refractor but superior to the SCT uh, contrast is better than SCT but uh, lower than the what you can see through a refractor like the uh, star wave or Lyra F11 102 millimeter uh, those are planet killer you can see with so many details this one is, is not as good as that, but it's better than SCT Schmidt Cassegrain uh, telescopes like uh, Mead or Celestron. The reason is that uh, the, those, the image on those ones look actually a bit washed out for the planets. But this one is very clear. Contrast is good. The south equatorial part is very, you know, dark. Uh, brown near red and beautiful uh, but you cannot see more belts as you see two three belts but uh, I mean those bands around the Jupiter atmospheric bands but with the refractor in this condition you can see much more better far more details but with the refractor they're hopeless with the things like the deepest object or um, Things like uh, splitting the stars in the M15 globular cluster or M13. But the aperture is not enough. But these ones, you can you can see. In, in M15, I didn't see any details, but uh, M13 shows some stars. It starts to resolve. Anyway, very nice.